Here. What's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants video. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about a topic uh, that I might not get to address in my mock draft videos. Now speaking of which, my mock draft videos, well I don't want to say I plan on getting them out soon. But the combine, you know, it's going on right now as we speak. Uh, it's going to be over in a couple days. And uh, I was planning to get this mock draft video up, you know, like maybe a week after the combine or something like that. I've already started working on it. All of that, you know. But you guys already know those, the, the story, man. You already know the story. I get busy, you know, with college and all that. So it might be up a little later than expected. But I guarantee it's going to be up within the next two weeks. Now, that's a very big timeline. But within the next two weeks, you see my first mock draft. And I'm all, I only do, because it's, you know, it's a seven round mock draft, that's what I like to do. I like to try and project everything. Of course, it's not gonna be all correct. Uh, nobody can predict all seven rounds, but it's still fun to do. And generally, I plan on doing two of them. So I won't get to address all the scenarios I necessarily might want to address. So that's what this video is, you know, and I feel like I should put this out before the mock drafts actually go out. You know, where I talk about some trade scenarios that I may not get to in my two draft my two mock draft videos that's not to say i won't do any of them but i won't get to all of them so why not put them in right here so first things first up right real quick the trade scenario that not real not really a lot of people are talking about i've mentioned it a couple of times and ever since i've mentioned it it's been stuck in my head what if the giants trade with the oakland raiders they trade down from number four overall all the way down to number 12 overall but not just 12 the Raiders will give the Giants the 12th and 19th pick of the draft. Now then, a lot of people don't like this because we're already outside the top 10 and from four to 12, it's a big drop. That's eight picks away. You could really, you know, there's gonna be a lot of players gone that uh, people would have wanted. There's gonna be a lot of players gone that possibly even, you know, Gettleman in the front office might have wanted. There's not much of a reason when you think about it for us to trade all the way down to 12 unless the Giants don't like anybody that much, unless they're not in love with somebody and they think that they could improve the team better with two first round picks in the 12th and 19th overall pick. Now, why would the Raiders trade up? They might love a quarterback so much that they don't want to, you know, they, wanna, they don't want to risk this guy going to another team. Uh, it's been linked by a couple of reports uh, and, you know, a couple of beat writers and whatnot that the Raiders might be interested in Justin Herbert. We'll see how that goes. He certainly had a good combine, nothing too great, you know, but it wasn't bad either. So he had a good combine and the Raiders are definitely in the quarterback market for since, uh, you know, I want to say a year or two now. However long John Gruden has been there from the moment he stepped into the office of head coach, he's been rumored to wanted to trade Derek Carr and, you know, in general, the, the Raiders, in my opinion, are in the quarterback market. So maybe they want to trade up with the Giants, who are a very spicy, you know, spicy team right now because of their trade position, because of quarterbacks. And the Giants might trade down because of what I said. They might think that they could improve the team better here. But who can you actually take at 12 overall? Like I said, it's a very, very big drop. But there's still going to be players available. With the offensive line alone, I think that there's still going to be at least one of those top three offensive linemen there, whether that be Tredrick Wills, whether it be uh, Andrew Thomas, whether it be Makai Becton, I believe one of those three dudes will still be available down at the 12th overall pick. Not only offensive line would still be available, yes, your top pass rusher is gone, but that was already a fact even at number four with Chase Young being gone, but AJ Epineza is still a very, very much a realistic option at 12 overall. Some might even say that's reaching for him, but I feel like we're all forgetting that this guy really is the best edge rusher in the class. Not necessarily the best, uh, the second best edge rusher in the class, not necessarily second best pass rusher. I think the second best pass rusher goes to somebody like a uh, Isaiah Simmons or even a um, Derek Brown, but as just a pure edge rusher, that's where AJ Epineza comes in and he's a good option. I'm not in love with him, but maybe the Giants would take somebody like him there. There's also uh, Clavion Chison out of LSU, I might be mispronouncing his name, another really good edge rusher still available there. There's still good uh, wide receivers there, even though I'm not looking in to get a wide receiver, I would not like the Giants to take a wide receiver. If anybody from Giants staff is listening, please do not select a wide receiver in the first like three or four rounds. But there's definitely, I think all of the top wide receivers are still going to be there. Uh, other than, 
other than his name slipped my mind for a second. Uh, Jeffrey Okuda. Other than Jeffrey Okuda, he's probably being taken off the board. All of your top secondary players are going to be there, guys like Christian Fulton over at the safety, uh, safety side, Xavier McKinney, and uh, Grant Delpit. These guys are still going to be there. So let's say the Giants are not in love with anybody. Let's say, and who are the options right now at four overall that everybody's thinking about? We're thinking Isaiah Simmons. We're thinking uh, Andrew Thomas, Jedrick Wills, possibly Mikai Becton, possibly Tristan Wirfs. In fact, Tristan Wirfs would be available at 12 overall, and I wouldn't have a problem taking him at that spot because I think he fits right, like really nicely there, you know, with uh, value to actual pick. And like I said, you still got edges available there. And then 19, a lot of the players I just listed off are still going to be there because of the team's needs that follows and because of the value of these players so if we trade down to 12th overall with the raiders and their and get their 19th pick you guys could uh expect to see maybe a combination like a tristan Wirfs and a aj epineza or maybe a tristan Wirfs and uh xavier mckinney we could even see a clayvon chison and a grand delpit clayvon chison and xavier mckinney clayvon chison and maybe uh tristan Wirfs drops all the way down we could probably get patrick queen who's a really, in my opinion, really underrated linebacker in this class. I th I think he's the second best linebacker in this class. He's nowhere near what Isaiah Simmons is, but he's still very good, and we could address the linebacking core, whether it's with the 12th or the 19th. There's still good options here. They're not great options, which is why these guys are being mocked to, you know, between the 10th and the 20th overall picks. There's a reason for that, but there's still good options. And who knows, maybe one of them surprises us. Like I said, I fully expect one of the top three offensive linemen to still be there. And the second best overall pass rush, uh, edge rusher should still be there along with a plethora of uh, secondary options and linebacker options. So it's not as bad as you think. Now, another trade down scenario that I may not get to, may or may not, who knows, is trading down with the Los Angeles Chargers who are also in the hunt for a quarterback. Now, I mean, I guess this should go for the Raiders too. We don't know if they're gonna sign anybody in free agency, but as of right now, they're definitely in the talks for getting a quarterback through the draft. And like I said before, Giants in a really spicy, really nice position at four overall there where teams can try and trade up and get their quarterback. Now, unlike the Raiders, I'm less inclined to believe that the Chargers actually want to trade up and get somebody. I firmly believe that the Raiders are interested in Justin Herbert. I don't know if the Chargers are interested in any quarterback in this draft. Hell, they might even wait until the second round and maybe if somebody like a uh, Jordan Love drops there, I don't think he's going to drop all the way there, but maybe they're going to wait until the second or third round to get a quarterback and maybe they sign somebody in free agency or they tackle it next year. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about if the Chargers wanted to trade up with the Giants and what would they give us. Now, since you're only moving two picks, I think they would only give us their first and second round picks. Now, I would personally want more because you're getting a quarterback, you're getting basically your franchise, the future of your franchise. I would demand a lot more that's worth a lot. But, you know, GMs don't work that way. They Some of them even work with the, uh, I think it's that point system that goes where each pick has its own value and its own points and they might be trading with that or you know the Chargers might just want to play hardball the most realistic thing is that they give us their first and their second maybe their first and their third but i would not make that trade with them i would go for first and second i would like to get their first three picks but that's definitely not going to happen who knows though teams overpay for quarterbacks all the time and i would consider that you know you know you're paying in your draft picks it's Possible, probably not plausible, but if we get the first three charges picks, uh, the first round, second round, third round, that's kind of a no-brainer to me. You could definitely get anybody you wanted at four overall, at sixth overall, which is what I'm going to talk about. So if we were to go down to sixth, uh, Isaiah Simmons is definitely still in play. All three of the offensive linemen are still in play. Jedrick Wills, Andrew Thomas, Makai Becton. Maybe if they love Tristan Wirfs that much, Tristan Wirfs will still be available. Jeffrey Okuda might still be available if they like him that much. Like basically any player is still available because as a lot of people are saying in this year's draft, the draft doesn't really begin until the third pick because everybody knows the first pick is going to be Joe Burrow, the second pick is going to be Chase Young. Barring a major, major surprise upset, that's really what the first two picks are going to be. 
Third pick, uh, for months now, have been mocked to be Jeffrey Okuda. That could change. That's why I say maybe Isaiah Simmons is still in play. The third pick could be Okuda or Simmons. And the fourth pick in this scenario, the Chargers would be trading up to get a quarterback. I believe that the Dolphins will take a quarterback at five. And then we'll be at six where we basically have everybody else to pick from. So it's like everything is available at sixth overall. But what's available at 37th overall, which is the Chargers second round pick? In fact, let me go to 36th overall, which is the Giants' current second round pick. And let's say with the sixth overall pick, we take Isaiah Simmons. Let's let's play this scenario out. At 36th overall, I believe Austin Jackson will still be available for a right tackle. We can take him. And then at 37th overall, I believe either Yatur Gross Matos, who's been rising in the mocks lately, he might go in the first round even, or a... Uh, Julian Okwara to be available and I like both of these guys. I like both Moth Matos and uh, Julian Love and they will be available right there smack dab at 37 overall. I guarantee it and they will be a great addition to this defense as young edge rushers who have potential and still need to develop a lot more. There's a reason they're being mock mocked in the second round but they're definitely going to be a lot better than our, most of the options that we have right now. I think on on, they're gonna be on par with Marcus Golden if they come in and start right away and that's their floor You know Golden is at his ceiling right now. Their floor is a Marcus Golden type player in my opinion They could definitely rise above that. There's even guys like Zach Bond another edge rusher who's still available At 37th overall out of Wisconsin another guy who's been rising in draft boards a little bit If you don't want to go edge rusher there for some weird reason the safeties that I talked about earlier they might still be available I'm not saying they will be. There's definitely a chance that either a McKinney or a Delpit could drop to the second round. They might still be available. If you don't like that, you still got an Ashton Davis, another good safety, not on the level of the guys I listed before, but if you want to tackle a secondary, if you want to continue to tackle uh, the linebacking core, you already took Simmons first, you took Austin Jackson, you want to get another linebacker for some reason, you definitely have the option there. You could go taco old lineman again with uh, this time targeting maybe a center or a guard and a Lloyd Cushenberry the third. There's a lot of options here. And then, like I said, you could even switch it up. At the sixth overall pick, you could take uh, an Andrew Thomas. And then at the 36th overall, you could get your edge rusher or even your linebacker. So at 36th overall, you could get Gross Matos or Okwara and then maybe a... Patrick Queen, maybe if he slips, but more realistically, probably somebody like a Kenneth Murray out of Oklahoma will be there. There's there's good options with this trade down because, like I said, you're essentially moving two picks down, but you still have the pick of the litter, and then you got an extra second uh, second round pick, which they may or may not use, or they could use to trade down into the third round. Who knows? But very interesting scenario, and I think these are two scenarios right here that could benefit the Giants in a lot more ways than you would think initially you just have to go into it a little bit look at you know you know do your research on these players see where they would fall and look at the draft order and for both the Raiders trade down and the Chargers trade down not that bad and kind of equivalent when you look at the value for the players that you're getting you know in terms of what you're giving up you're giving up the fourth overall in the case of the Raiders trade and you're getting the 12th and the 19th in the Miami trade you're getting the 5th and the 37th and you could get even more like I said teams over favorite quarterbacks all time but certainly options to be considered here let me know what you guys think especially on the uh, Las Vegas Raiders trade I like it a lot I don't want it to happen um, because I guess I, I should put that out as a disclaimer if out of these two trades I would choose one I would definitely tr uh, choose the Chargers trade because we would still have the pick litter at 6th but I believe I could I showed that the Vegas Raiders trader is not that bad. Let me know what you guys think. That's what I got for you all today. I'll put your comments down below. Like, share, please subscribe. I'm out. You're Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. You're